Well, that was quite an interesting wager out of Melissa there on that penultimate clue. Welcome to the final wager. I'm Keith Williams. I hope you had a great weekend. I watched Friday's game live, and now I'm watching Monday's game live. And, uh, yeah, this is fun. Because if Melissa doubles up, she's going to have 13,600, which is exactly Steve's total. So in an era when ties have been allowed, that would have been a great way to just tank that clue, get down to 6,800, and then hope that you can double up. Personally, I would prefer that she gone big there, but... I like that wager as well because, first of all, either way, you got to get the final clue right to have a shot to win with proper wagering. If she had doubled up there, she would have had 17-6, and uh, Steve is too close for her to be playing too many mind games here. Uh, I guess it opens up additional options to go big. But um, here, it was a $2,000 clue in a category they didn't really like, and uh, I think the $1,600 clue had been... Difficult. It was that Arizona Republican. I think that's the name of it. I, don't, I still don't know. Uh, clue, and then, yeah, 2000. If you know you got to get it right, you might as well uh, put all your eggs in that basket if you don't like the present category. So, not too much math here. Uh, Steve has a decision to make. First of all, Melissa better wager everything. Kim had better wager basically nothing. So, I mean, I'd be fine. 1600 is, 1601 is technically the correct wager, but there's no way Melissa doesn't wager everything here or else I'm not going to be very happy. Steve, if I'm Steve, I'm trusting my knowledge base. I'm going to go for at least a dollar. You could wager up to 1599, although, um, what I might consider is. There's a decent chance that Melissa's going to wager $67.99, which would be really dumb. So, so I might just consider waging a dollar and not putting on that extra amount. Of course, zero is perfectly fine to wager two. Play for the tiebreaker if you think you have a better knowledge base, if you think you have uh, faster reflexes. Basically, if you think you can win a single clue in a random category that you don't know anything about, you think your chances are better there than in getting this one clue right, then that's a play that you can make. That uh, Robert Frost clue threw me for a loop. Uh, and I can understand, I can't remember who had the Daily Double. Was it Steve, I think? It was almost, I can't remember. Whoever had that Daily Double, that was a tough one because, uh, you know, you usually associate him with Vermont, not with New Hampshire. And I almost thought about uh, uh, John Irving, although they mentioned poets, so that helped me get back on somewhat decent track. And was that Carl Sandburg clue a two thousand dollar clue? Yeah, I hope not. All right, we're ready for a lead. I can't remember what the category is. Man, the answer, what, is what is twelve hours, hours of sleep a night? A Let's play with. This sounds like a tough category, doesn't it? World Heritage Sites. Let's find Stonehenge. out as I read this clue. The 14th century citadel of the Ho Dynasty in this country was added to the World Heritage List in 2011. Players, you have 30 seconds. Good luck. Now you gotta go to Southeast Asia for this one. And here's where I think you run into a crapshoot. The reason I put up Vietnam is because I think Ho Chi Minh, and I think Ho is the uh, is the family name in Vietnamese uh, naming structure. So I mean, you could say I was thinking I, my first thought was Cambodia. You could even say Thailand, maybe even Myanmar, but uh, this seems the most likely to me. It's a popular site for American tourists these days. Team, we come to you first. You were in third place with an even six thousand, and you wrote down the correct response. Right, good. Vietnam. And you okay, that's fine. I would say anything up to 55, 59.98 would have been good. Melissa, she's smiling because she too wrote down Vietnam and her wager. Okay, good. Everything that puts her into a tie with. All right, we're gonna see what Steve did here. Did he come up with Vietnam? No, he put down Korea. Did he risk anything? 
Oh no! One dollar. So the mark of his loss is a bottle. Oh man. That is just heartbreaking. Wow, sorry Steve, played a good game. And we once again missed out on an opportunity to see a tiebreaker. Oh well. Uh, congrats Melissa. That turned out to be a very good wager at the end there. Uh, either way, as long as you hadn't wagered more than 2000 you would have been the winner. But, uh, yeah, the odds of the leader missing and the second place player getting it right are not quite as good as uh, you would expect with random coin flips. It's, a, it's less than 25% where that would happen. So, uh, Steve, I would always make that $1 play unless it was such a bad category for me that... I didn't think I had a chance of getting it, but even then, the categories lie. Uh, I was also laughing about that uh, French loser category, or whatever it was, the French mistakes. That was good. Well played, writers. And uh, Mel Brooks is happy tonight that he was mentioned on Jeopardy once again, because he watches it every night. That's all out of me, and uh, here's hoping for Melissa's sake that we don't see any clues on dinosaurs tomorrow, at which time I hope you'll join me right here on the final wager.